as we continue to prepare for the glorious feast of the Nativity of our Lord on Christmas Day, we once again listen to the inspired writings of the prophets selected for us by the Church to be read and studied during this Advent season. So on this Advent, Gaudete Sunday, we hear the voice of the prophet Zephaniah and in today's gospel, that of the last of the Old Testament prophets, John the Baptist, in whose prophecies we grasp and in truth are grasped by a fuller understanding of the real historical Jesus, the Jesus foretold by the prophets and fully revealed in the canonical gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And through closer attention to the prophecy of Zephaniah, in its context, a distinctive feature emerges. On the one hand, we hear, shout for joy, O daughter Zion, sing joyfully, O Israel, be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem, striking the keynote of this Gaudete Sunday, so-called from this text and the first word of the introit at the beginning of Mass from the Latin meaning rejoice. Thus the reason for the lighter color of the candle lit this week on our Advent wreath and the vestments we wear. But on the other hand, it is also from the prophet Zephaniah that our Lord's coming is described in quite different terms where the prophet thunders that day is a day of wrath, a day of tribulation and distress, a day of calamity and misery, a day of darkness and obscurity, a day of clouds and whirlwinds. This is one of the texts from which the beautiful old Catholic hymn, Dies Ide, the day of wrath, comes. The first few stanzas of which in translation are Day of wrath, O day of mourning, see fulfilled the prophet's warning, heaven and earth in ashes burning. O what fear man's bosom rendeth, when from heaven the judge descendeth, on whose sentence all dependeth. Death is struck and nature quaking, all creation is awaking, to its judge and answer making. So in Zephaniah, on this Gaudete Sunday, we see seemingly paradoxically, at one and the same time, in close proximity, the dark thunderclouds of God's looming judgment and the bright, sunlit, and joyful day of salvation. And as was Zephaniah, so with John the Baptist. They both saw and depict these two aspects of the coming of our Lord from their perspective as very closely related, if not one and the same. But 2,000 plus years after the birth of our Savior, from our perspective, these two aspects are seen to be separated by an expanse of time. <clears throat> and that expanse of time is the distance between the first advent, the first Christmas, and the coming of our Lord at the end of time, in power and great glory, his second advent, yet to come. And so the Catechism teaches us, when the Church celebrates the liturgy of Advent each year, she makes present this ancient expectancy of the Messiah by sharing in the long preparation for the Savior's first coming, the faithful renew their ardent desire for his second coming. And that which stands between these two comings, that which fills this expanse of time as a bridge between these two advents, is the glorious cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, ever present through time, in and by the holy sacrifice of the Mass, in which is found joined together both the day of wrath 
Hence, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the day of joy, consummatum est, it is finished, and then he is risen. Definitive judgment and everlasting mercy and joy, where the lamb is the lion, and the lion is the lamb in the divine and human natures of the one person of our crucified Savior upon the cross of Calvary. And so Advent teaches us through the prophets that now this interim is the time to prepare by virtue of the Lord's first coming as the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world <clears throat> by our intentional participation in the fullness of the provision of his cross made diachronically, that is through time, present in the holy sacrifice of the Mass in preparation for his impending second advent as the conquering lion, the judge of all the earth. With his first advent, Jesus comes as the babe of Bethlehem, our Redeemer, meek and humble of heart, saying to you and to me, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and you will find rest for your souls. But with his second advent, he will come as our judge and conquering king as we profess in the credo to judge the living and the dead as described by John the Baptist in today's gospel with his winnowing fan in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff, we are warned, will be burned with unquenchable fire. So on a more personal note, as your pastor, I am conscience bound to ask you, are you truly preparing for that advent? Whether at the end of time or at the time of your end, for one or the other will come sooner than you think. <clears throat> I tell you solemnly, it is a certain incontrovertible fact that many who at mass prayed and listened on the third Sunday of Advent this time last year have since passed from this world to appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for the deeds done in the flesh. And I assure you, it is a certain incontrovertible fact that even if our Lord delays his second coming, some of us who are praying and listening presently in Mass today will follow them before the next Gaudete Sunday of Advent. It very well may be me, but it also might be you. At that moment, whenever it comes, for each and every one of us, there will no longer be distinctions of nation, race, rank, wealth, or accomplishment but only the great and then permanent distinction between the wheat and the chaff, between the sheep and the goats, between the day of rejoicing and the day of darkness and doom, between the eternally saved and the everlasting lost. Again, we may take counsel from the hymn Dies Irae, for this by way of preparation should be our hearts plea. Righteous judge for sin's pollution, grant thy gift of absolution, ere the day of retribution. Worthless are my prayers and sighing, yet, good Lord, in grace complying, rescue me from fires undying. There is, therefore, in this Advent season, on this Gaudete Sunday, one question which everyone here should lose no time in answering if it has not been answered yet. What is your actual relationship with the Jesus of Matthew, 
Mark, Luke, and John, who for love of you was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, died upon the cross, and rose again the third day, your Redeemer and your Judge. Do you know him? Do you love him? Are you living a life that pleases him? Or are you living a life contrary to the profession of your faith and one which presumes upon his merciful grace, the grace of his first advent? In the honest, open answer to these questions, you may, by the grace of his first coming as the Lamb, our Redeemer, and the cross of his atoning sacrifice made present upon this altar, prepare for the overwhelming power of his second coming as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, our eternal judge, where standing before his mighty throne in the glory of his might, you may one day hear the words which give life. Well done good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord and not those words which shall be the sentence of everlasting death. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. If during this advent you are prepared and are truly preparing for that great day, then you by grace in this holy mass Know in your heart of hearts that you know and love him intimately and that he knows and loves you. And the prophet's words are this day fulfilled in you as a foretaste of the things to come. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love and for you the peace of God which passeth all understanding, keeps your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And this is truly a time of rejoicing. Doesn't matter what the circumstances are. This is for you, truly, Gaudete Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.